David Knox for making the time for us. Thank you. Thank you for thank having you. me here. Thank you for having us in this beautiful uh, uh, town in Austin. Austin, yeah. In consensus. I think uh, first thing first, uh, if you can tell me a little bit about yourself, about Babylon, where the idea of Babylon came from. Sure. And uh, where the name of Babylon came from, yeah. and why, and, uh, and we took it from there. So yeah, sure. A little bit this. about myself. Uh, so I entered the blockchain space about five years ago, six years ago. Uh, so I'm a primary researcher. So I entered mm. from a researcher angle. So I got interested by reading Nakamoto's white paper. I found it really fascinating paper. So we decided to, um, so I'm also a professor at Stanford. And so I decided to start a research group to do research on uh, blockchain consensus, starting with uh, Bitcoin and then evolving to proof of stake protocols. And so through all this research, we learned a lot about proof of stake. We collaborated with uh, Vitalik and his team, Ethereum Foundation, in helping them to improve their proof of stake uh, consensus before the merge. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of experience doing research. And we realized that there's a natural way, there's a nice way of combining the security of Bitcoin with proof of stake chains to build a high level of security. And you know, as you know, security is like the bedrock of mm -hmm. Web3, right? Without security, there's no Web3. We might as well just go back to the Google and the Facebook, right? So the whole point is having a decentralized, secure protocol. And uh, we find that, yeah, Bitcoin could be that security layer that sort of uh, underpin the security. And so that's why I started this project called Babylon about two years ago, pursuing this vision. Mm -hmm. And I suppose the question for, for our viewers is, uh, how did you link the dots? How was it... Uh, come to an idea that there is an asset class there that's unutilized mm. and how can we utilize it? How do we build the technology for this and where the genesis of the idea itself uh, came from to you? Yeah, so um, the observation is that this asset class of 1.4 trillion oh. is basically a store of value. Mm -hmm. People buy Bitcoin not because there are a lot of things they can do with the asset, but it's because that they believe the price will go up, and so they want to they want to use it as a store of value. This is particularly valuable in developing countries where there's a lot of inflation, etc. Uh, but whereas the rest of the eco, uh, uh, crypto ecosystem is all about economic activities, right, earning yield opportunities, so we find that it's a bit strange that this 1.4 trillion is sort of sitting idle, idle, nothing to do. Mm -hmm. um, so. And so we start thinking, is there sort of a good use case, okay, which we can create for Bitcoin? Now, we also know that Bitcoin is digital gold. So if you have gold, you don't want to mess around with the gold, okay? Oh. So whatever use case we come up with has to be very secure, has to be very secure. And so if we look back at the rest of the ecosystem, okay, what is the uh, activity that is of lowest uh, risk, lowest risk and still earn yield, okay? Interesting. Staking. Mm -hmm. So staking, so this is a bit of a paradoxical because proof of stake was actually invented to replace Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. But you know, over the years, Bitcoin has not been replaced. Mm -hmm. It's still sitting there. Proof of stake is also a very significant industry. The staking industry is a few hundred billion uh, worth. And so once we came up with this realization that staking is sort of the crux, the low risk crux that underpins a lot of the DeFi activities mm -hmm. in uh, proof of stake ecosystems, mm -hmm. then we realized that, hey, can we give this primitive to Bitcoin as well? So that's the, that's the crux of the idea. Yeah. Super interesting. And I promise we'll start a little bit simple and then I'll go to mm -hmm. a little bit more challenging uh, question. Mm -hmm. So let me just challenge you on the mm -hmm. point of digital gold. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people out there that argue that it's not digital gold. Okay. When you look at the hierarchy of asset classes, probably uh, Bitcoin is a speculative asset class. It goes uh, as a very risky assets. If you can just give me a little bit of your thoughts uh, from a technical and philosophical perspective mm. as well into why uh, would you argue is digital gold and has this function? Yeah, so I think to me, right, uh, yeah, the analogy is not perfect. I agree mm. with you. But to me, the reason why I think that term makes sense, makes some sense, is because gold is kind of uh, viable. One big reason is because of the limited supply. Okay. It's hard to get more gold. It costs a lot to get more gold. 
And Bitcoin has this beautiful 21 million fixed supply. So you never increase the supply. And, uh, and there's such a strong belief around the Bitcoin ecosystem that you would never imagine that someday people would decide to change the protocol from 21 million to 210 million. Yeah. So I think that is sort of, the, to me, the, the um, parallel between gold and Bitcoin. So the scarcity element is, is very important in, in your view. Okay, interesting. So uh, next, th next question from my side is, um, we, if we go to, to our viewers that are a little bit more technical, uh, more well-versed in Babylon and, and so on and so forth, what is it, uh, we know we're approaching the, the launch, what's happening after the main net goes live in terms of reward, in terms of how will it, what is your vision once you go live? Because I think there are a lot of questions from from our viewers, from people in the ecosystem that mm. want these yeah. questions to answer. So any insights, any uh, value you can add that things we don't know that could add value to them, that would be, would be graceful because, because everyone at the moment in the ecosystem is scratching their head, okay, this is beautiful, this mm. is interesting, solving a huge uh, technological breakthrough in the, in the, in the space. But what's going to come after, if, if you can give us yeah, some so colors there? Yeah, you know um, so my role in the project is the technology. Okay, so mm -hmm. we're focusing on building this technology. So I, w I think I want to comment more on the technology and what we're doing with the mainnet. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the system, the protocol that we're building, Bitcoin staking protocol, has two parts. It has the Bitcoin part and it has the proof of stake part. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty complex system. And so we decided to launch the mainnet in, two phase, in, in multiple phases in order to make sure that we can do a step-by-step -step, uh, safe manner. So in the first phase, we will do a uh, stake lock phase. So in other words, Bitcoin holders can lock their staking asset, their Bitcoin, into our staking contract, which is on the Bitcoin chain. Okay. So phase one is entirely about Bitcoin. There's no proof of stake chain. Uh -huh. Okay. So that is to 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 show the world that this is a safe protocol, and uh, yeah, and also for us to gauge a certain level of interest in the protocol in terms of how much bitcoins bitcoiners are interested in staking this protocol. So that's the goal of the phase one. Now phase two is when we're going to launch. Uh, one chain, which is the Babylon chain. So the Babylon chain, as opposed to the Babylon protocol, the Babylon protocol is a Bitcoin staking protocol. The Babylon chain acts as sort of a, a middle layer to help the individual proof of stake chains to get the security from Bitcoin. It's kind of like a orchestration layer. Uh -huh. And we're gonna launch that as the first chain that itself will get Bitcoin staking. So that's phase two. In phase three, we will launch multiple other projects that we are already working with in the DevNet and integrating with Bitcoin staking protocol. So that's the phase one, phase two, phase three. Okay, so, okay perfect, thanks. That's actually super helpful. So, uh, another uh, question that comes again, you know, come back is, uh, this is a direct question, is either yes uh, or no, and sorry to put you on the spot on this one, is around the 500 BTC limits. Is this something that would change in the future? Is this, is this something said? What is your views uh, around this? And I suppose the most important one for us as well is why is this limit set? Why is it not 501, not 499? Yeah. yeah, I don't think I can give you an answer to that resolution. <laughs> yeah. But yes, the initial cap for the mainnet launch is 500 Bitcoin. Okay. 500 Bitcoin. I mean, it's a round number. Mm. So we don't want to choose some random arbitrary <laughs> number that people don't remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, but why do we have a cap first, right? Why, do, why don't we just let anybody stick mm. uh, any amount they want? Um, it's for security reason. You know, again, go back to the analogy of digital gold. So in some sense, we are designing a protocol for people to, you know, provide the gold. We are a new protocol. We're a new protocol. Mm. We have done a lot of uh, security audits and so forth. But uh, so we decide to keep the cap small so that we can do another one month of a bug bounty program, mm -hmm. okay, to see if someone can attack our protocol. Now, it would be very bad if someone were able to attack our protocol and we have 5,000 Bitcoin sitting there, mm -hmm. okay? So 500 is the number that we think of as manageable risk for us mm -hmm. as a protocol. 
So that's the, so that's the bug bounty program. So we, are, we already have two security audits going on. We have another one we started, actually we have three, three going on right now. They were finished before the launch. And then we have this bug bounty program for one month after the, the first cap. Brilliant. Brilliant. So that's a design. Excellent. Uh, I'm, you know, I appreciate we, we have limited time, so I have, uh, I have three, four questions more. So two are probably uh, straightforward questions is if we can get your views around, uh, which links to, to the question you just answered around security and so on, uh, around risk taking and LRTs. Mm. So if you just can draw the landscape of how do you view then, you know, the interaction uh, with those players and, mm. and Babylon. Yeah. So there are a lot of uh, liquid staking protocols mm -hmm. built on top of Babylon. So maybe just a little bit of uh, uh, the analogy here uh, is Babylon is providing Bitcoin staking. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin staking is analogous to Ethereum staking. Mm -hmm. It's a primitive. Mm -hmm. So when Ethereum staking is built, the first protocol that's built on top of Ethereum staking is Lido, right? It's mm -hmm. Lido. And so in some sense, I guess it's good to mention Lido here. <laughs> uh, just realized that. <laughs> Maybe that's why you asked me this question. No, no, no. But it's always good to hear. <laughs> uh, so now we are seeing a few protocols that try to build sort of the Lido equivalent mm. for Babylon Bitcoin staking. Interesting. And uh, so, you know, the thing is that in crypto, uh, security is important. But another very important, or maybe even more important for some people, is liquidity. Mm -hmm. And so these liquid sticking protocol, mm -hmm. uh, typically what they do is they will take, uh, have the customers bring the Bitcoin into the protocol, and then they will stick it on the Babylon Bitcoin staking protocol, mm -hmm. and then they'll mint, they'll create a mint asset, mm -hmm. they'll mint an asset to be deposited perhaps in the chain that is secure by the Bitcoin sticks. So... When you ask me how to interact, it's like you first have security through staking, and then you have liquidity, which is secured by the staking. So that's the vision of some of these projects. And what is your thoughts around the custodial solutions they use to lock the, the BTC and go use it, a derivative of that BTC on Ethereum, for example, and so on and so forth? Is there something there of concern, something you know that we should be aware that viewers should be yes. aware, yes. better to solve this problem in the future, we'll at least yeah. to highlight it from your perspective. Yeah, involved, so right? I would like to highlight that, right? Mm. So, you know, we are Babylon, we provide trusted staking, okay? Mm. So that's the primitive. Mm. So anybody can directly stick on the Babylon protocol, mm. and there's no trust assumption, okay? Mm. The trust assumption is exactly the same as Ethereum staking, mm -hmm. okay? However, you, when you go through some of these uh, staking, uh, what do you call it, liquid staking protocol, there are indeed further trust assumption, uh -huh. further trust assumption, and it depends on the different solutions. Uh -huh. In general, these trust assumptions are more than the trust assumptions in, on Ethereum. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, the, and the reason is because of the lack of smart contract. So in Lido, I believe, if uh -huh. I understand correctly, uh -huh. you guys are the professionals, the staking is done through a smart contract. Uh -huh. uh, but in Bitcoin, as we know the smart contract capability is very limited. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, the current solution has a, a more of a custodial feel to it, mm -hmm. okay? Now, on the longer term, there are some technologies that people are building, mm -hmm. a technology called BitVM in particular, mm -hmm. uh, which allows uh, smart Bitcoin. contract capability on Bitcoin mm -hmm. by doing a lot of off-chain computation, okay. okay? It's a little bit like an optimistic roll-up type yeah. of architecture. Yeah, yeah. And that will perhaps solve this problem of building trustless liquid staking protocol. But we're not there yet. Interesting. Interesting. So I want to be very clear on that. Yeah, no, no, that's actually very Because we don't build those protocols. They're no, very, very yeah, important. We don't build those protocols. And stupid, and so stupid. we cannot stop people from, and yeah. I think it's good for people to build stuff on Babylon, because, but I think the trust assumption, the risk has to be understood by the users. Exactly. Exactly, very, very helpful. I suppose next question for, uh, for me, David, it's around uh, the staking dApps, you know, the relationship you have with them, what do you expect from them, are they going to build their user interface? The staking? The, the staking dApps in general, the, you know, so uh, it, you're, like your partners on, in Babylon, you know, are they going to create their own user uh, interface? Yes, is it, yes. What is it, I mean, like, I suppose, 
what's the expectation? How do you see it evolving in, 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 yeah. in the Babylon ecosystem? Yeah, so um, one design of the mainnet phase one that I have not talked about, which is connected to your question, mm. is that we are not only asking people to log the Bitcoin, okay? We're actually asking them to also delegate the Bitcoin to a set of validators. Mm -hmm. So in the ba Babylon jargon that we invented, yeah. we call them finality providers. Mm -hmm. And the reason is that these people sign basically special signatures mm -hmm. uh, to provide Bitcoin security to proof of stake chain. So we call them finality, finality provider. Mm -hmm. Or you can think of Bitcoin finality providers. Yep. Um, so we will have a list of finality providers that would be uh, running the network, uh, that would be registering with the system. Mm -hmm. And then they will accumulate sticks, mm -hmm. okay, through this phase one. And then in phase two, they can use the stick to secure the Babylon chain and other chains. Interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so therefore, we give incentives to mm -hmm. in, individual operators or, or finality providers mm -hmm. to appeal to their community, mm -hmm. to their customers, mm -hmm. and extract Bitcoin stake from them. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the design as well, in order to allow uh, more um, participation in our protocol. Beautiful, beautiful. I appreciate we only have uh, two minutes left, so, so I'm gonna ask the, the you know, the, the blockbuster question that everyone- The was, blockbuster question. Everyone, uh, everyone asking, mm. uh, you know, with loud voices, what they really wanna hear it from you, and I think uh, this occasion could be perfect to shed some lights uh, around it. So uh, the question around the tokenomics, uh, what the tokenomics model would look like for, for Babylon. Mm. So, so a lot of people are quite interested to, to know, especially advanced, uh, uh, protocols like Lido and so on and so forth, it's this huge and important to kind of uh, scope the, the source of resources and investments they will pull to, to Babylon. So if you can give us some insights on this, that would be really, really highly uh, appreciated. Yeah, yeah. so uh, unfortunately... And I appreciate it's a greedy question, but uh, you, know, like, you know, I don't, I don't mean to I, put you on the spot, you know. Yeah, I, I, you know, my focus is really building the technology uh, and as you know, in most blockchain projects, there will be a separate entity, a foundation mm -hmm. that will be taking care of that aspect mm -hmm. of the, we understand it's important. And uh, so, but I focus only on the technology. So mm -hmm. I don't think I can answer that question at this moment. Perfect. But in the future, you know, whenever there's this entity, then you can ask them that this question. Beautiful. Yes. Uh, any timelines around where we can expect such uh, information uh, on, on that front? Uh, you know, when we launched the mainnet the phase mainnet. two, yeah. I think so definitely, around phase two, yeah, around that, yeah. Because phase one is Bitcoin only, right? So yes. it doesn't involve yes. our it doesn't, own tokenomics it okay, or the Babylon tokenomics. Yeah. Absolute sense. Yeah. Listen, David, it's been hey. absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. We wish you the best with Babylon. Yeah. And we, we will be with you on that journey. Yeah, thank That's you so sure. much for thank your you awesome so, support, so P2P. Thank uh, you. hundred percent, hundred percent. So our, we have Vlad here with us. He's, uh, He's our Babylon expert, so he'll, oh, he'll have some, expert, some oh, questions nice for you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you.